Hello, this is David Wormsey and in this video I wanted to share with you a free way that works with Beaver Builder to get this two-step opt-in effect, also known as Lightbox Forms. Now, like others in the Beaver Builder community, I discovered a free plugin called Pop-Up Maker that I use for this. Now, I've been using Pop-Up Maker for over a year, almost since when it was first released, and I think it's a really good solution. So what I want to do is to show you how to set it up up, why I think it works so well and maybe later I'll cover a little bit about how it's worked out for me using it on live sites but first I really need to give thanks to my mate Colin Cartwright over at Dynamic Beaver because he's the person who first spotted this plugin and told me about it so if you don't know about Colin and dynamicbeaver.com I really suggest that you go over there and check it out because he's got some wonderful videos for Beaver Builder users. Now there is already a bit of history to the double opt-in form and Beaver Builder. I remember when I first joined Beaver Builder, it was one of my first requests that they added double opt-ins to their planned subscribe form module, which came out last year. When they wrote their blog post on it, announcing the new module, uh, halfway down here, they covered uh, why they didn't add double opt-ins and the reason here was that they were already plugins out there that probably did the job well enough and I agree with them but also before this blog post came out I realized that my own request wasn't such a smart one after all given the way that I would use it so if I just go back to this original site here most of the time I use double opt-ins on a button that I replicate numerous times on the page pulling up the same information if we'd have gone the module route with this I would be duplicating all this content the images text form multiple times on one page potentially slowing down the page and also as Google will see all of this stuff it's maybe there's a SEO issue with duplicate content I am not so sure on that but it just doesn't seem the right way to go plugins do in fact seem the right way to go so what I'm next going to do is to move on to how we would use this uh, with the pop-up maker. So let's go into the back end of our site so we can see Pop-Up Maker in action. As you can see, it's already installed and this is what it adds to my menu. I'm in all pop-ups and as you can see, I've created one called Get Started. There's only one on this site, but you can add as many as you like. And these are custom post types, so they operate the same as any other WordPress post where we can add in text and images. But more important in our case, we need to be able to add in short codes to add in our content contact forms. Now I've got a bit fancy on this one and I've used the Beaver Builder shortcode to display pre-made templates that I've saved and I've also used the uh, subscription module uh, to display uh, the actual form there. So if we just have a quick look so that makes more sense. As you can see I'm using Beaver Builder content which I've, I've popped into there. Now I probably better just for anyone who doesn't know what shortcodes are and just seeing this video, if you need to learn more about shortcodes, can I suggest that you go over to wpbeaverbuilder.com into the knowledge base and look up shortcodes and that will give you some information about how you can display content like that, but it's a bit too much for this video alone. So uh, back to here, the other things you need to know is how once you've made your contact form and you've got it looking the way that you want it to look, you need to be able to trigger that from a button in Beaver Builder and this is how we go about it. Over here we would add a new trigger and there are two types that the plugin offers. These the click open which is the one we're using because we're triggering from a button and there's the auto open which I'm not going to cover here but that's the uh, timed pop-ups that can come and you can set how long it is before the pop-up appears. And the other thing we need to know here is that we need to add in a trigger CSS selector which I've used a class so it's dot get started class over here and once we've created that with the uh, selector in we're good to go all we need to do is to go into our page and I've got one open already over here and add it to our button and we do that by going into our button settings going into advanced scrolling down to the bottom there and then we add in our class of get started uh, without the dot that's always the case with beaver builder and we save and from that moment we are opening up our pop-ups now there's another thing i need to cover over here that uh now this is something that when I first started with the pop-up I didn't quite like, it didn't have many conditions. So once you started to put a pop-up it was uh, outputting those pop-ups site-wide to all of the pages. So I, I contacted the um, developer Daniel 
ISA or ISA, and uh, who was fantastic. He uh, within a couple of days he implemented all of these uh, fancy conditions. But in this case, uh, it's a really simple one. I just selected uh, that I wanted it to show on selected pages, and from there I just had to type in that it was the home and that it was the about page that I wanted it show on, and that's it. It wouldn't show on any other stuff. Now the other settings that we got here for just the content itself, you've got the display widths where you've got some already preset ones and you can decide whether it's responsive or not. You can set them entirely yourself. You can change uh, the, the way that the uh, animation comes in. There's uh, slide in and grow and fade in and also where it gets positioned. Also on top of that, you've got uh, settings you can override for, um, for closing. So you can disable somebody from being able to close the pop-up. I don't know if that would be the right thing to do in any situation, but you can actually do that. And and that pretty much does it. Now, what I also need to cover is that there's a theme setting. You have to choose a theme. Now, I've used the default theme because that's when I started this, this was all available. He's just recently added these extra themes, but the default is fine. And if we go over to here, we've got all themes and we can actually create our own themes now. I think you used to sell these, I believe, and now you are able to, yes, create your own themes. But what I've done in this case is because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any extra padding because if you remember, I've got this Beaver Builder short code displaying content which I've already set up. So my styling is there and if I wanted padding, I would have added it to this. So all I needed to do with the default theme was to go down and, well, I don't need to go very far, just needed to make sure that I zeroed out uh, all of the padding here. So if you can see, it gives you a little example of what's going on. Uh, over to the right there. So it's really handy for styling this and there's quite a lot of options here which I don't want to cover because this will go on forever I think. You may be looking at this and thinking well this is an awful lot of stuff, this is a lot of bloat with this plugin and I'm really particular to not have bloated plugins on my theme. So I did obviously test this out. Now, what you're really adding to this is uh, a couple of database queries when you activate this. Uh, it's not taking up at all much memory. And of course, if you're caching anyway, those database queries won't affect you. It's also outputting a JavaScript file and also a CSS file. But in terms of the CSS file, if you go into settings over here, you are able to disable this and add your own styling. But it's very small. We're talking about really those two combined about 25 KB. So it's not something I felt I've needed to do. Um, there's also another setting here where you can make sure that you don't load uh, Google fonts that you might put in in your themes over here. Uh, so if you've got them outputting or you're using your own styling, it doesn't output and choose to use their Google fonts. But there we are, we can clear away the CSS over there. And I think that pretty much covers that. I'm sure you'll be able to work it out for yourself, but uh, you know, it's really recommended. It's really handy if you've got to hand something over to clients um, because they will probably be able to work out some of these changes of some of the settings quite easily. Okay, so I think next I'll just move on to a bit of a discussion about how I've used it and how it's worked out for me. And this last section is really just for people who know about the double opt-in form, but maybe have not heard what conversion experts have been saying about it. I mean, I first came across the concept, I think, through listening to the Smart Passive Income podcast over at www.smartpassiveincome.com podcast. And it was the episode on rapid list building, uh, episode uh, 78. And it had uh, Clay Collins on it from uh, Lead Pages. And I don't believe he invented it, but he was selling the benefits of the double opt-in form. Basically, as we all know, um, those pop-ups that appear on sites are quite annoying, but we know they are quite effective, at least in list building. I don't know about the quality of those lists. And we also know that people are really quite adverse to the hard work of filling in a form. So this seemed a, a perfect way to get around that. As we know, a lot of people are browsing around, clicking randomly with in their lizard brain mode. And once somebody's clicked 
on something and a pop-up appears, they've kind of half committed to it and more likely to fill it in. And that's really what they found with their own experiments. It tended to increase their list building by something around 30%, I think they were saying. So I obviously wanted some of this and uh, I can talk about one site, which is just my brother's very uh, simple site. The one that you've been looking at on local version is actually a live site over here and it has a, a much simpler form. But uh, what we did is uh, he's had his uh, simple site up originally on HTML for about eight or nine years. But a year ago, I changed it over to WordPress and added this button. Largely, the design was very similar with his face on it and most of the uh, text and imagery was the same. So the major difference was uh, the double opt-in forms. And it really has boosted. I mean, he only gets a uh, traffic of we're talking about 200 to 250 uh, visits a month. But uh, where people used to ring him, they still ring him the same. But now they started filling in the forms. Um, and this has really increased his sales, I would say, about uh, or his, his clients that he gets by about uh, 30%. You I mean, always used to get enough work solely from his website. And now uh, with this, he's starting to buck up up to six months in advance. So it's been a real benefit there. But I have used it on some other sites, one for a charity, one for an author who's got a published book, and it's not showing the same effects. So, you know, uh, if you were to listen to Smart Passive Incomes, you would think it's the thing to use in every situation. That's not the case. And if you pop over to Unbounce, which really, in a way, competitors for lead pages in the sense that they produce landing pages uh, with a page builder. Um, they've got a great episode, and this is the easiest way to get to it, is to go to the vimeo.com and look up Unbounced. And there's one over here, do a Lightbox Forms Convert. And uh, it's a long a long webinar uh, for about an hour. But the, the upshot is that a lot of their tests, it didn't convert. In fact, it went the opposite way. The forms did better than the pop-ups. In one particular case, it it was for uh, legal documents to download. And I guess, you know, their thinking was that it didn't do as well as the pop-ups just because a form perhaps would look more conservative and solid than something that maybe looked a bit slightly spammy as a pop-up. So anyway, that's just something I wanted to throw in. I, I think they're great for conversions, but not always the case. And you have to think about how you use them. Anyway, uh, I'm sure you know all of this stuff. And I just wanted to get a little bit of debate going. And thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope that was useful to someone and I will catch you on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.